Reflection is a tricky concept. It's not just one thing, it's a whole range of different things to different people. And many people grasp onto one part of it, perhaps not all parts of it. And that's uh, uh, really quite reasonable because we're all quite different people. So the importance of reflection comes down to what we feel comfortable doing and how we actually manage to do that in a meaningful way. I have drawn on many researchers and much of the literature to inform my conceptualisation not just of reflection but reflective practice in particular. There isn't one definition for a start. I think we need to establish that. There's no one definition um, because it depends very much on the context of your own university, your participation context, your cohort of students and there has to be flexibility in any way in which we define it. But if we're looking at a few of the basic tenets of how I conceptualise it and how I would start to define it is that at the beginning it is a, an intended action, the reflection, it's not something that just happens. It is planned and intended where you, you the individual, engages in some level of reflection on often past actions. Um, we know that we can also reflect in action. So as we're, for example, now as I'm speaking, I could also be reflecting on, well, what am I about to say? Um, am I happy with what I have just elaborated in terms of definition? Would I like to think about fine tuning that later on? So we can reflect in action, and then we can also reflect, and we don't do this enough necessarily, for action. For the students as well, by looking back, I believe there would be three perspectives. One would be looking back, how did it go? One would be looking at the current situation, so what's happening right now, and also what does it really mean for the future? So I think in theory terms there is reflection on an exercise which would be looking back, reflection in, which would be looking at the current situation, mm -hmm. and also reflection for the future. And that is also a key component of my, of my teaching approach, mm -hmm. where it's not just done and dusted, but also, so what have we learned about, for example, teamwork, marketing itself, and what does it mean in the future? So where have we gone wrong? So let's do it better next time. Mm -hmm. And what did we do great? Well, let's repeat the success. So it's not just a, an exercise so it's kind of ticked off. No, not at all in actual fact. It's really meant to be uh, having an impact on the student's experience mm -hmm. and what they're going to do in the future at the university and also beyond, maybe in their private lives, but also in their careers. In terms of, um, say, students in participation, they could be reflecting um, on an experience. It might be something that happened that was very short but powerful and meant something to them and their learning. It may be over a whole experience, um, so reflection can be short. Often it takes considered time. Um, and it can also have almost no time boundaries because once you start reflecting how do you stop? I particularly like Hatton and Smith's framework for reflection. It is the framing and reframing of difficult questions, the thoughtful analysis and interpretation of assumptions and ideas, and a new synthesis that allows us to move forward with these ideas. The best definition I've come across of reflection is purposeful thought. It's not therefore what you do in the, in the shower in the morning, the random thoughts that come to you as you go to sleep at night, it's none of those, although they can be part of the process. Reflection really is thinking purposefully through some concept, some idea, some incident, something that's happening to you at any particular time. Now, some of the words that we use for reflection will make more meaning to some people than to others. So you can think about it as being critical thought, or perhaps evaluation or review, or analysis of a situation or an idea or a concept that's come to you. It can even be something as simple as just consideration or deliberation about what's actually happened to you over a particular period of time or what might happen to you in the future. 
It can also be not just about you as a person. It can be about you, what you're doing, and how that connects to your future profession, perhaps, or to the wider community or the wider world. So there's a whole range of things that you can do in reflection, and it's all part of the same thing. Reflection to me is an, a very important part of student learning. In a way, I perceive reflection to be a timeout, where students detach themselves from the whole obsession and kind of understandably, you know, they're, they're concerned about marks, getting a high distinction or a distinction or something of that sort. But in my view, the reflection is really a tool to detach oneself from that thinking pattern and really think about what did we really learn. So put it all in perspective, think about this particular assignment in context to the overall unit, the, the actual course, and maybe also in context of the overall degree that they're doing. So it's really a tool to detach themselves from the whole uh, grades and marks and so on world and really think about the, the learning itself.